Yeah. So I actually saw that you, so you were going to school in, I think York university and you were actually wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah, us about your uh, wrestling experience. It was, it was pretty awesome. I loved it. I was, uh, my record was 24 and 0. My, for, I only did one season. Right. Okay. And, uh, all I did was judo throws. All I did was Uchimara and Kosoro. And then I would, I would pin them. That's all I did. I like, I, I didn't get any training really. We would train, but I never worked on my single leg or double leg. So it was, it was pretty, it was different. It was very different from judo. So what so, is your, your coaching staff on your wrestling program? And they were, they were obviously, you know, happy with the success that you were able to do, but was there ever like any intention to say, look, look we got to get you more to become a fundamental wrestler rather yeah. than this successful judo guy. That's kind of, you know, bridging that gap. Actually, my coach came, my wrestling coach came to me and he's like, oh, there's uh, wrestling nationals because I beat the national champion, the tournament before. So he's like, oh, like you should, you should focus on wrestling. Like, cause I didn't have my, uh, I was still suspended at the time from judo from, uh, well, not suspended. I had to wait the three years like uh, to change uh, nationality. Right. And he's like, oh, like dude, wrestling, you don't, you won't lose time and uh, yada 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 and then i was like uh, like you know what i'll stick to judo and uh yeah but i had an opportunity to, to do wrestling instead of judo but i declined what do you what do you think the um the crossover i mean there's a lot of americans i mean if you look at like the history of american judo a lot of the successful athletes in fact almost every one of the successful athletes that america has produced over the last 30 years has also been a pretty high level wrestler as well. Cause in America, we don't have the numbers for judo, as you know, yeah, yeah, but we've got yeah. giant numbers in wrestling and a lot of successful people, guys like Jason Morris and Jimmy Pedro and Mike Swain and, and all these people like we were, I, I was talking with a friend last night and we were saying like Travis Stevens might be the only successful American judo player at a high, the highest level that really didn't spend a lot of time wrestling, but almost everyone else wrestled. What did you feel like the wrestling helped your judo at all? I honestly feel it did because you you see the sport, you see it differently, right? You see different angles, you see different patterns, your reaction is different. So I feel 100% it helps. And also if a wrestler would, would to do judo, he would see, of course, it's harder to transition from wrestling to judo because of the gi and everything. But I think it's very healthy. Like for example, Travis Stevens did BJJ at least, which is another sport, of, um, another kind of combat. combat. Right which I think helps you see differently. And that's, that's super cool to do. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys do much cross training at the national training center in Montreal? Do you guys dabble in jujitsu at all or? Uh, not, not really. I think cause uh, Sasha, like Sasha, we have pretty good Niwaza coaches. Yeah. So Niwaza's groundwork, of course. Um, so I think, yeah, like they're pretty great on the ground. So we, I think we get enough groundwork to, to not go to BJJ class or anything. But I did go before when I was in Toronto and I was like, oh, I can keep up with them. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I think the specialty is a little different. You know, there's some of the finer details that you see in jujitsu, but a lot of that stuff is not really applicable to judo at a high level. As you know, like there's some athletes on the world tour that neglect Newaza altogether yeah. and they're still yeah. able to find success. So I think like jujitsu is like, or, or Newaza, I mean, is kind of a, a choice that some athletes decide to pursue. And I think it's a really big opportunity for some athletes, because there are so many athletes that neglect it altogether. So it's like that chance to kind of, you know, maybe get somebody that you couldn't throw otherwise. Exactly. And I always wanted to chase the big throws and everything and be like, Oh, like, let's keep it standing. But recently our worlds and my first fight at the Olympics, well, our worlds, I beat a guy who beat me four times by doing new and I was like, Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So yeah. I think I'm going to start doing it more in competition. Of course, I, I, I think my stand up is better, but a lot of people neglect new like you said. Right. So how much of your success could you attribute to being a little brother? Honestly, a lot. I think Mohab went through, Mohab was national champion. He was supposed to go to Worlds, Junior Worlds, but then he didn't have his passport. So he, like, he had to wait and they took Louis Kriber instead, which he won it. Like, I love Louis. Right. Um, so he kind of went through all the, the, the troubles and the obstacles. And I was just in the back, like chilling. I'm like, oh, I'm like, man, we could try again or something, right? So I think he went through it. And then, of course, he, like, would protect me from it and tell me what to do. And especially, like, even before, before my fight, my repechage fight uh, against Peter Palchik, I called my brother on FaceTime, and he tells me. He's basically my coach. Before every final, before every big fight that I know I might have some trouble, I talk to him, and he tells me what to do, and, and I stick to it. 